Hello, I'm Jamie with the Volusia County Public Library. In this video, you will learn a few more watercolor techniques and create an abstract piece of art. You will need the following. Watercolor paper, a piece of cardboard or a similar hard surface to work on, masking tape or painter's tape to tape down your paper, a round brush, your watercolors, and a container of water. Let's get started. If you're new to watercolors and have not watched my first two videos, I recommend watching those before moving on with this project. We've started by taping our paper onto our work surface. I used painter's tape and a piece of cardboard. You're gonna to wanna to tape a small border on all four edges. Today we're gonna to use what we've learned about watercolors and color theory so far to practice and make an abstract piece using rectangles. You're going to choose a color that you like and then choose two colors that are adjacent to it. For today, I'm going to be using this red. Mm, nope, I think I'm gonna use this red. I'm gonna be using a red and then I'm going to also use an orange because it's next to it on the color wheel. And then I'm also going to use yellow because it's another primary color and that will give me a nice warm palette. So I'm going to be using a red, orange, and a yellow. So choose a color you'd like, go back and look at that color wheel, and then choose some complementary colors to go with it. We're going for three colors total. We're going to start by loading our brush with water. And if you're using the dried cake watercolors like I am, we're going to need to activate our colors. So decide which color you want to start with. I'll go ahead and start with my red. And start activating your paint. Now for the first few rectangles, we don't need them to be super wet. We're going to actually want those to be able to dry because we're going to do a certain technique with them. So I'm going to go ahead and take some paint off my brush so I get a bit lighter red and your rectangles can go either way. They can be all different sizes. We do want to leave some white space on the paper and you do want to leave some room around them. So I will put this up in the corner and as I'm placing the rest of my rectangles, I wanna keep in mind I'm going to be putting a rectangle over this. So we're gonna practice layering colors with these first rectangles that we're doing. So you're gonna to wanna to place them where you know you'll have room to put another rectangle that partially goes over it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one of each of my colors and that will get all three of my colors activated as well for when we move into the next technique. So you can do different size rectangles and have them oriented different ways. Remember white space is our friend for this project. We're not going to be completely filling our paper. And I'm going pretty light on the water with these because I would like them to dry by the time we get done practicing the next technique we're gonna do on this. So I'll get my yellow paint going here and put in a yellow rectangle. And they don't have to be perfect. This is your art or this can just be your practice. Alright, so I've got one of each color and I'm going to let those dry. If you have a larger or smaller paper, you can of course adapt this to fit the space that you have. For the next activity, we're going to want our rectangles to be very wet and we're going to need to move uh, kind of quickly. So we're going to pick up some paint. We're going to paint a rectangle. We're going to quickly wash it off and pick up another color of paint and we're going to paint the rectangle next to each other. So I'll show you an example here so you're kind of prepared. So I painted this yellow rectangle and made sure it was very wet. And then I painted this red rectangle and made sure it was also very wet right next to it. And as a last step, I just let the corners touch. 
So we're looking to get these colors to move back and forth in between the rectangles. So that's the technique we're gonna practice next. So you still need space for two rectangles, but they're only gonna to touch in that corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with red. I'm not gonna take any paint off this time and I'm gonna make sure my brush is nice and wet. And I'm going to paint a rectangle. And you can always go back and dip your brush in the water and pick up some more water if you don't think it's quite wet enough. I'm gonna quickly clean off my brush, go in and grab some yellow, and I'm going to paint a second rectangle. So I'm gonna get them close, but not quite touching until I have this yellow one filled in. use some more water so I'm going to dip my brush back in and make sure it's nice and wet and then I'm going to connect so you can see the yellow is going over into the red that's a little harder to see but the red is coming into the yellow so that's the effect that we're practicing with this you can even kind of tilt your paper and encourage the pigments to go further in so there I got a big wash of red into there and I could even uh, make, while this is still wet, I could connect another rectangle off here. I could do another red one or I could do an orange one. And of course, you know, the colors that you're using you can do. So go ahead and practice this technique a couple of more times, different places on your paper, and I'll meet you back here after that. So as you can see, I had uh, the original one I showed you and I added two more pairs of rectangles where I've touched the corners and let the colors bleed in. And remember, you can always tilt your paper and kind of get the encourage the pigments to move throughout so you can see the orange whoops has come into my red rectangle here and a bit of the red has gone up into the orange even the lighter you do your pigments um, the easier it will be to see and it kind of depends on what colors you choose how well you're going to see the colors go into each other which i think is kind of the fun of this watercolor technique so my original rectangles that i did are pretty much dry now you can also use a hair dryer um, on a low heat at a high distance away because you don't want to spread your watercolor outside of how you've painted it um, to help dry things. Or if you have like a craft heat gun, um, you can use that as well to help dry if you're um, not wanting to wait for the pigments to dry on their own. So. I'm going to go ahead and choose a color and we're going to layer just a bit of it um, on top of this. So I have a yellow one here, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up some orange. And this is called glazing. And it does work better if your pigments are not quite as solid. So I'm going to dip my brush a few times and take some of the orange off so I have a little lighter color orange more like this and I'm going to layer part of this orange rectangle over the yellow. It's still a bit dark. So you're gonna be able to see the yellow through the orange. So even though the orange rectangle is on top, we get that view of the yellow underneath, and that's glazing. So it's layering the different colors of watercolor. I'll go ahead and pick up some yellow. Mm, yellow I might want a little darker to go over this red. We'll see how it comes out. So I'm gonna layer, just do over the corner here. So it kind of depends which colors you've chosen, um, how many light colors you have if you need to soften them up by using that tinting technique with the water. So there we have our yellow, but you can still see the red from the original rectangle underneath. So you can continue to do this and fill your paper as much or as little as you'd like, um, depending on if you're gonna use this as a piece of artwork that you might hang up 
uh, in your house or use for maybe a greeting card or give as a gift to a friend or if you're just using this solely as a practice piece you can go ahead and fill the entire paper. It's your piece of artwork, it's totally up to you. So go ahead and continue until you're happy with how it looks. I hope you have enjoyed our continuing watercolor journey. Stay tuned next month for another watercolor video with new techniques and a project. If you're interested in learning more about watercolors, you can check out these books and more at your library, as well as the Creative Bug database. And remember, stay crafty, Volusia.